Hi class, and so we're just gonna keep moving on when we are with looking at cellular structure and function. So we just finished looking at some organelles, the rough ER, the smooth ER, the nucleus, and I previewed the Golgi apparatus. So remember, the rough ER is gonna make a protein and then send it to the Golgi apparatus. So what the Golgi apparatus says is it's going to modify and package those proteins. It receives those proteins from the ER in what we call a transport vesicle. Okay, so just a little transport vesicle. Proteins are modified as they move through this Golgi apparatus. And then the Golgi is just going to ship that protein off to the final destination. So it might go to another cell or it might go somewhere inside of the same cell. So it receives it, modifies it, packages it, and then ships it off. Kind of like the post office, right? And so that is a transport vesicle. Vesicles are very important in the functioning of cells because they are sort of like uh, the UPS trucks, right? Just taking things where they need to go. Now what happens, we make all these wonderful proteins, but proteins don't live forever, just like cells don't live forever. So what happens to proteins that are old or just don't function anymore? Or what happens to other cellular parts that are old or don't function anymore? Well, we have a specialized organelle called a lysosome. Lysosomes are full of digestive enzymes. So they're going to digest food and or break down and recycle damaged cellular parts. So they take it in, they eat it basically, they break it all apart, and then they're going to release um, just the basic components, maybe the basic atoms or macromolecules from that protein or from that cellular part. So lysosomes are very important for recycling. Okay, well, when you eat food, right, you are digesting these macromolecules. What does the cell do with those macromolecules? Well, it uses it for energy. So creating energy or converting energy is another big function of the cell. And in animal cells and plant cells, the mitochondria is the organelle that is going to make energy. So it's going to take the sugars that you eat. Remember, sugars are simply carbohydrates and glucose. And it's going to take that in and turn it into ATP. And we're going to learn all about how the mitochondria does that in our next unit on energy. <clears throat> ATP is the energy molecule of the cell. It stands for adenosine triphosphate. And so we'll look at how ATP is made next unit. Now what about plant cells? I showed you an animal cell in this figure. Um, maybe you're thinking, I thought plant cells made their own food, right? You've been taught that all growing up, you know, plants make their own food. Well, yes, you're right, but they also have mitochondria. Very important to know, both plant cells and animal cells have, have mitochondria. So you might be thinking, why do they need mitochondria? They make their own food, right? They make their own sugar through photosynthesis. Well, the chloroplast is going to convert sunlight energy into sugars through photosynthesis, so you are right. But then the cell has to do something with those sugars. It can't use those sugars to move and to do other cellular functions. It's just sugar. So it uses the mitochondria to convert that sugar into ATP. Then the cell can use that energy molecule to move, to communicate, to do all sorts of cellular functions get things inside the cell, get things outside of the cell. Sugars alone cannot do all of that. Sugars are good for building their cell wall, they're good for energy storage, but they're, that's pretty much all they're good for. So the mitochondria take that sugar and make ATP. Okay, so now we've got all this energy, all this ATP. What does the cell do with that energy? Well, I just previewed a few things. They do lots of things with it, just their basic everyday life. They make proteins, they replicate, they communicate, they transport things across the membrane, and they have to move, okay? So let's look at some, some structures that help your cells move. Some cells have cilia, okay? So this is cilia. And cilia function in a sweeping motion. I like to think of them as sort of like a broom. They sweep back and forth. And so this is a little close-up look at one little cilia. Now another um, <coughs> structure that helps cells move is the flagella or flagellum. And that moves in a whip-like motion. So cells, as you can see, would have many, many, many cilia, thousands, but flagella, a cell might only have one or two, and that functions in a whip-like motion. And that does it for that se the second video on cell structure and function.